Welcome to TTM Cast, your sports collectibles podcast. Sponsored by CGC Cards. Card grading all in one place. CGC Cards is devoted to expert grading of collectible cards, including TCGs, sports cards, and non sports cards. Sponsored by Collects, the free app for scanning and valuing your cards. Use the app to build your collection and buy and sell with other collectors. Turn the hobby into your side hustle. And by SportsCollectorsDaily.com. If it happens in the hobby, you'll find it on SportsCollectorsDaily.com. And sponsored by GemRate.com. The latest grading statistic from the four major grading companies is just a click away. Visit GemRate.com. It's free. And now, here's our host, Drew Pelto. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to TTM Cast, your sports collectibles podcast, where we talk all things related to TTM, cards, autographs, collectings, and a whole lot more. You never know what else we might come out with on here. This is season six, episode number five, coming to you on February 10th here on this nationally ranked sports collectibles podcast. My name is Drew Pelto, hosting the show from a very rainy North Texas and coming down pretty much all night on into the morning here. Fortunately, about to clear off after this. And we're rejoined once again by our co-host Troy Rudder back after a few weeks off coming to us from Iowa. It is going great. It's uh, not raining here, but it's uh, it's still a little chilly, but about 20 degrees more than it, it should be here in February. So that that's the good part of it. Be nice have, well, it's got to be nice to have a heat wave like that every now and then. Exactly. It, it, it beats the minus 20 degrees finally. Yeah, that's that's for sure. I probably mentioned to you before, I was born in Cedar Rapids and in kind of mid-April, and the day before I was born, it snowed there. So anytime you're not dealing with, you know, snow in April kind of stuff, there is always good. Exactly. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's May, you get that final snow, but let, let, let's hope it's uh, early spring, and that's, what, and that's what the groundhog says. So. Exactly. So we're finally there. We're at the Super Bowl now. Any thoughts on this? I mean, you've got the uh, got the 49ers at two point favorites, over under of 47 and a half. Which way are you going on this one, Troy? Well, you know, uh, I'm not, I'm, I haven't been too successful on the scoring part of the Super Bowls, but you know, this this time I have to go with uh, as a lifelong Iowa State Cyclone fan, I, I have to go with the 49ers. That's that's pretty much my only prediction. You know, you, if I was to to go against Brock, I think. Uh, Everybody would know it and be over at my place by tomorrow after listening to the show. So, I definitely get that. I've I've got a lot of friends from Kansas City, and so I kind of feel like I have to go for the Chiefs because of that. But at the same time, it's like I mean, I don't really have a giant allegiance to either team in any way. I just want to see an interesting game, a fun game. Just give me that, and I'm going to be pretty happy with everything. NFL awards: the big winners end up as the Houston Texans and the Cleveland Browns. Gotta love that, being a Browns fan myself, but the Houston Texans end up with the Offensive and Defensive Rookies of the Year. Browns come away with the Defensive Player of the Year, Head Coach of the Year, Assistant Coach of the Year, and Comeback Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've followed the Texans, uh, you know, I think I think back when J.J. Watt first came down there, but I uh, haven't really followed them lately, so that's really interesting. Got a new Hall of Fame class coming in as well. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have the list in front of me here of all seven inductees, as they do every year. But Dwight Freeney, I know, is on there. Randy Gratishar being a big one. All my uh, all my Broncos fan friends were uh, going crazy about that one. And he's an Ohio State guy, so of course I've got to be uh, got to be a fan of that guy uh, going in there as well. <laughs> well, you know, Ohio's almost the same as Iowa, so I'll, I'll go with you there. Yeah, I mean, there's there's four letters in both names there. We always get those. Everybody gets those confused between Iowa, Idaho, and Ohio. So. There was actually somebody that my parents met when they were living in Iowa, and uh, they were telling about a time they were talking to somebody and said, oh, yeah, we're from Iowa, and the person that they were talking to said, oh, that's cool, but yeah, out here we call that Idaho. And they just kind of looked at them like, what? No, no, just just, just stop, stop, and just, just walked off at that point. And, of course, this week, we're my favorite time of the year. Pitchers and catchers are reporting Dodgers have already gotten their guys in. Everybody else can be in by the 15th of the month, I believe, but... Baseball season just around the corner now. Yeah, you know, uh, I haven't done any spring training TTMing in, I want to say, three or four years. I used to do like a, a special report every year of who signed the previous year and looked at all of the social media stuff and put together this report. But uh, it's kind of fallen off the last few years. I know uh, people's successes have kind of gone down. They're 
a lot of people are just concentrating on, uh, you know, bench coaches from former players now. But, you know, this might be the year to uh, to try some some TTMs for current players via via spring training. I might pick up. I know uh, there have been some good deals on uh, 2023 factory sets of tops. Um, going down from fifty nine to I think thirty nine dollars now, so I might have to pick a couple of those up and and ship some of those out. That is not a bad price at all. I'm heading out to Arizona for spring training a couple of weeks, and kind of wondering now, hey, might I have time to grab one of those beforehand to take with me and break that down? But we'll see. At the very least, I've got a friend who's given me some uh, twenty three Bowman draft. I think he's got the full set of that, so I'll hopefully be picking that up from him and give me something to get done. It really seems too like a lot of the guys that are signing lately. They'll get all their mail, you know, during spring training and all that, and then they just get all caught up with in the offseason. You'll see a lot of, you know, spring training stuff sent out that ends up being uh, coming back in, you know, November, December, January, somewhere in that range. Yeah, and that makes it difficult to uh, uh, obviously know who's signing and and if you're watching for those last minute sends, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. So <laughs> we'll have to see what happens. You know, this might be the year that I send out to spring training. We'll see. We'll see. It, it's always fun when you send to. Uh, you know, Florida and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I might actually kick a few out to Florida myself because, I mean, it's going to be in Arizona, but I can see those Florida guys, so it might be worth a try. And speaking of spring training, I think i uh, got a couple pickups for this weekend. I think, number one, I finally figured out which games I'm going to go to there. So hopefully going to be able to see each team at least for a little bit while I'm there, the way I've got this all planned out, hopefully. I mean, things can change, obviously. Uh, also picked up a Greg Maddox rookie card I'm going to take with me on down there. I know he's working with... It's either the Padres or the Dodgers. I don't remember which one. One of those two. I've got in my notes over there and stuff. But got his rookie card. See if I can get that signed if he happens to show up for it. He might. I think he's typically there for at least a little bit of it every year. Uh, what else? Also got in a uh, Jim Rice photo here from a friend of mine out in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, my friend Sarah messaged me a while back. She said, hey, I've got this Jim Rice photo, and uh, I don't need it. I don't know if you'd want it. I'm like, yeah, gladly I'll take it. And so... She kept forgetting to send it to me, and so finally she says, hey, I'm going to be in Dallas in a couple of weeks. I can bring it down if you just want to meet up at some point. And so, uh, yeah, I got this in uh, this week there. You can see it right there. But, uh, yeah, glad to uh, get that in. Saw her for the first time in 20 years, so that was pretty cool. So a couple of uh, collection additions there. Troy, uh, did you pick up anything at all? Didn't really have any pickups uh, this last couple weeks, but I did pick up a, uh, I don't know what you, you'd actually call it. It's a, it's a commercial-grade acrylic gravity feed dispenser i guess so it holds a uh, uh, three different uh compartments of gravity packs and it just shows the pack on the front and you just kind of slide them down i i've been thinking of doing some pack openings and i just thought that'd be kind of fun to fun to get so just that and a few other supplies like uh you know top loaders and and tall dividers to write down the names as I'm continually, endlessly sorting the cards. So that's uh, pretty much my pickups, but nothing, nothing for the set, for the '91 Don Russ set or anything. I'm pretty much down to a whole bunch of two hundred to three hundred dollars signings for that set. I only only have less than seventy cards left out of that seven hundred and seventy set, and they're all superstars, pretty much. So yeah, that's about the same as where I'm at on like the 1972 Tops set. It's all. Everybody that I've got left, it's either it's somebody who's dead or it's somebody who's going to be charging 100 plus per signing. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. I think I'd rather just hold off and see if I can work a trade or something like that. A little bit later on, we're going to be joined by Rob Parker in our Collector's Corner segment. We'll be talking to him as uh, he's a big hockey and soccer collector, mostly. He and his son, Braden, both uh, heavily into hockey. He's also done some soccer stuff in there. And we'll get to hear about uh, his collection and all about uh, what he's into and everything. And, of course, we have all of our regular segments where we have Baker's Dozen talking about everything upcoming in uh, actually everything from this past week in the world of sports collectibles news. We'll have Collector's Corner right after that that I just mentioned. We have Making the Grade talking about all things in the grading portion of the hobby. We've got Stamp Approval where Troy and I will give our two thumbs up to something from the previous week. Could be just about anything. You never know what it's going to be. We've got the Vern Rap Minute where we cover deaths in the world of sports, celebrity, music, movies, politics. Anybody you might consider TTMing, we will let you know if they have passed on. And, of course, the main reason why we all are here, it's our TTM Returns. If you want to reach out to us, Troy, where can people contact us at? Well, the best email address for us is just simply ttmcast at yahoo.com. 
Yeah, so send any questions, any comments, anything you got that related to the show, send it to us there. If you want to reach out to me directly, you can find me at dfwgraffer at gmail.com. Troy, I know you're active on social media. Where can people find you at? Yeah, so YouTube, it is just TTM Autograph, and you could also find my website at ttmautograph.com, and just drop me a line at Troy at ttmautograph.com. Great. Well, hey, let's go ahead and jump right on into the week's news with Baker's Dozen. Baker's Dozen, sponsored by SportsCollectorsDaily.com. Smart collectors turn to Sports Collectors Daily to stay up to date. From new releases to incredible collections hitting the auction block, news from inside the business of sports collectibles, and much more, Sports Collectors Daily has it, all with no subscription cost. SC Daily also delivers a live look at the most watched sports card auctions on eBay for every sport. Sign up to get the headlines in your email for free or just visit the website whenever you like. With 16,000 stories in the archive going back 16 years, there is always plenty to read at sportscollectorsdaily.com. Baker's Dozen is a news summary of all things that have been going on in the collectibles world over the previous week. We want to remind you, of course, that uh, Collects.app is a sponsor of the show, C-O-L-L-X dot app. And you can get $10 free in their marketplace. Just send us your Collects username and your email. Just make sure you download the app first before you sign up for all that. Send us that info to ttmcast at yahoo.com, and we'll pass it on and make sure you get a $10 credit for use in their marketplace. We also remind you about Five Star Dynasty. We had Amir Kim El Malawani on the show a couple weeks ago talking about that, and he's got an Instagram bonus for TTM Cast listeners. If you go on and uh, make a purchase through their Kickstarter campaign, follow him on Instagram at Five Star Dynasty Game and send him a message. Let him know, hey, you're a TTM Cast listener and that you made a purchase, and he's got an extra bonus for you there. It may involve some autographs. So uh, make sure you check it out. Five Star Dynasty Game on Instagram. Five Star Dynasty.com is their website. And, of course, I have my weekly article on Sports Collectors Daily talking about all things TTM. This week's upcoming article is probably going to be about a trade deal that I want to try to make. Uh, Troy, have you ever heard of this thing that was called One Red Paperclip? Don't believe so. So it was this guy in Canada, and he started out with one single red paperclip. Just, you know, a little red paperclip, nothing much there. And in the span of a year, he took that paperclip and through a series of trades... He traded up to get a house. So he traded the paperclip for a pen. He traded the pen for something else. And there's this whole series of 10 trades across the span of a year. And eventually out of it, he ended up getting a house. So I'm not going to get a house out of this. I don't think I'm even going to get like a Babe Ruth autograph. But I want to see like how far along can I get in a year just making trades, starting out with just one card. And so it's going to be a, a 1993 Topps Frank Tanana is what I'm starting with. I mean, let's be honest, Frank Tanana, good player and everything, super nice guy, but everybody in the autograph world probably already has his autograph at some point. So, so it's something, you know, that carries pretty limited value in the autograph world. I want to see how far can I trade? How far can I get with this thing? And just keep on making trade after trade after trade for the next year or so and see what happens. Well, I think it's only right if you include his testimonial card that he also includes with every TTM that he... You know, I think I have like three of those, so I could definitely toss one of those in there as well, just as a little extra bonus there with it. Yeah, I think that's a that's a that'd be an interesting project. Yeah, so I just want to see, you know, how far can I get on this? I've already started a blog for it and everything. You can find it at one Frank Tanana. It's O N E spelled out one Frank Tanana dot blogspot dot com. And I figure I can, you know, chronicle everything with it there, what I get, what I send out, any anything related to it at all. But yeah, if you want to get in on this. If you want to trade for one Frank Tanana autograph card and kick this whole thing off, send me an email at dfwgrapher at gmail.com. That's, that sounds awesome. I can't wait to see how that progresses. Yeah, I think this could really be fun. It'll be, uh, it'll be an interesting thing to try this out. So let's go ahead and move on to some hobby news here. So we've got news from Panini. They have signed now two of the top high school quarterbacks in the country to exclusive autograph deals. Both these guys coming into college next year, uh, Dylan Rayola of Nebraska and... Julian Sayan, who had committed to Alabama, he's now decommitted from there. He's headed off to Ohio State now. So interesting to see this. The card manufacturer is getting this, like, 1950s-style Topps versus Bowman war, where, you know, back then they were trying to, you know, just sign all the major league players. Now it's signing these guys just getting into college, getting on these NIL deals and everything. So interesting to see that. And uh, Panini making a big splash right there among uh, the competition there with Fanatics and Leaf and everybody and just landing two of the big-name quarterbacks there right off the bat. Yeah, and uh, some other news this week is the Nationals 
actually announced their next big superstar uh, autograph guest, Jerry Rice, was recently added to the list. So uh, that's pretty exciting. I, I don't think I'm going to make it this year, but maybe maybe someone out there could could help me out on some of these that have been coming out. And there's always some new signers that they announce. I, I think it's every Wednesday. So you can visit nsccshow.com for more info on both uh, probably the, I don't know if prices are out yet, but uh, definitely the the guests are coming out on that website. Fun little oddity of note right there with uh, Rice being announced. All three of the signers here, the first three, all have last names starting with R, with Ripken, Ramirez, and now Rice being added uh, to the list of signers here for this year's national. <laughs> I guess they're going uh, alphabetically like I do some of my TTM Sometimes, you know, I, I start with the A's and then I'm like, where did I leave off? And so I start with the A's again, but uh, <laughs> maybe we'll get some more R's coming up here. We mentioned this one a few weeks ago. I think it was actually the last time you were on the show, Troy. We had uh, the Jordan Dynasty collection of shoes going up for auction. That has officially sold $8 million being the price tag on that one. You get one shoe from each of Michael Jordan's six championships, plus a signed photo of him showing him sitting there in the locker room without the shoe in question there so fun little piece there to go along with that uh Sophie's estimated that was going to go for seven to ten million dollars and well clearly they're right on the money with that eight million being the final sale price there another great piece in that auction the official score sheet from his 69 point game against the Cavs in 1990 that went for fifty thousand dollars so as always Michael Jordan stuff Bring on, bring in some uh, big money in the collectibles world. <laughs> wow, that is, yeah, I remember that from the last show. That is just crazy. Um, in other news, excuse me, the if you're looking for the Bowman U Chrome that was of LeBron and Bronny James that one and one, well, you're kind of out of luck because someone uh, pulled it up at Jim and Steve Sports Cards in Waukegan, Illinois. So that is a big one. I actually saw that come across my newsfeed and I went to look at it and I was like. Okay, yeah, that that is a a pretty good pull. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I kind of screamed once when I when I got the '82 um, <clears throat> Cal Ripken Jr., but I can't imagine what I would do if I would have pulled that. So, uh, yeah. still still unknown if the card would be sold or not. Uh, they're kind of hanging low on that and just kind of a, uh, having the publicity, enjoying the publicity of pulling that, but. I can't even imagine what that would be like, like just sitting there pulling that. And yeah. Can you imagine like, what would you do? Would you just stop? And I probably would have to stop, take a break for a moment, catch my breath and just be like, okay, celebrate for a moment and then go, okay, how, how am I going to go about selling this now? And uh, just, yeah, go from there. Exactly. Wow. So an 82 Ripken rookie pulled from a pack. Is that your best? Would you say that's your best uh, pack pull ever? Um, it was, you know, it, it was a nice pull. But then uh, when it came back graded as a as a 10, that was that was even better. Oh, and so, and yeah. so uh, you know, I sold it. I flipped it right away, and I found out that there was this guy that was actually collecting all of the PSA 10 ripkins and i probably could have gotten a little bit more but it, it was it was really nice like as soon as i saw it i was like perfectly centered perfect and i'm like okay here's open and so for me it was the 89 upper deck griffey just bought a random pack of 89 upper deck one day and dead center of the pack there it was and didn't quite get the 10 that you got it was a nine i believe from beckett but still that's a i'll gladly take that any day still got it sitting in my collection right now and I think that serves as a perfect transition point right into our new releases. Got about five that we're talking about here this week. First off, it's the uh, 02, 02. Wow, taking the time machine backward there. Um, 22-23, Upper Deck, Clear Cut Hockey, coming out February 14th. It's one of those lottery ticket products right there. You get one card per pack, one pack per box. It is a premium autograph card. Never know what you're going to get out of those. Might be somebody great, might not be, but uh, $90 is going to be the pre-sale price on those ones for anybody who wants to take a gamble on it. Yeah, we also have uh, another one coming up on February 14th. That is the 2023-24 Panini Prism Basketball. Now, that one you could actually do a little bit better than one, one card per pack. That is actually 12 cards per pack and 12 packs per box. And with that, you're... Pretty much guaranteed two autos per box with 10 inserts and 22 prisms, but the pre-sale price on that 
uh, box is one thousand dollars. And I did see I did see a little bit of a discount out there for nine hundred and eighty nine. So there are discounts that you can get out there. But <laughs> coming in at one thousand dollars, those uh, Panini Prism basketballs again on February fourteenth. We've definitely seen a big jump in price on Prism products over the last couple of years there. But, I mean, it's kind of become the premier rookie card for a lot of these guys in uh, basketball and in football. Yeah, definitely. There's some more basketball coming off the presses up there at Panini. 2023-24 Donruss Choice Basketball. February 14th, the release date on that as well. A lot of stuff coming on Valentine's Day, so uh, maybe your significant other will get you one of these products or something. But you get 10 cards per pack here in Donruss Choice Basketball, one pack per box. Loaded with some uh, inserts and hits there, though. Two autographs and three parallels out of those ten cards. Pre-sale price on Don Rush Choice Basketball will be $300. And looking up toward 2024 Topps ba- Baseball uh, Series 1, you got both hobby boxes and jumbo boxes coming up, and you have or jumbo packs. The hobby box has 12 cards per pack with 20 packs per box, and again, one auto or relic per box. And those jumbo packs there are 40 cards per pack with 10 packs per box. And so those you get, theoretically, three hits per box and at least one auto. And you can find those uh, pretty much at about $100 for the hobby boxes and $175 for the jumbos. Last release to cover here is the 2023 Topps Chrome Formula One Racing due out Friday, February 16th. You're going to see four cards per pack, 20 packs per box. Uh, no info on autographs. I don't think any guarantees on those, but we do know that the, no, the autos are all going to be numbered to 99 or less, so some nice uh, short printed ink in there. In each box, you will get one base dual-colored parallel and one checkered flag parallel per box. So if you're a racing fan, check those ones out. Pre-sale price will be $300. We've got some upcoming show news here over the next week as well. What do we got for next weekend there, Troy? Uh, well, we have New England Fan Fest. And that will be at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Warwick, Rhode Island. And you got uh, Dennis Rodman, Ray Bork, and a ton from the professional wrestling with only an admission charge of $25 for that. We've got the Arc Latex Sports Card Memorabilia Show also next weekend, February 17th. They'll be at the Bossier Civic Center, Bossier City, Louisiana, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Free admission for the show. They're going to have about 90 or more tables at it as well. And for any uh, LSU fans out there, going to have a few of LSU's recent football signings that will be there. A $20 donation, and you can get autographs and photos from those players that are going to have there for it. So if you're an LSU fan, definitely go and check that one out. And we also have on February 17th, Play at the Cage Show. And that is taking place up in Ypsilanti, Michigan. And that will be about 100 tables up there with Will Johnson and Colston Loveland from the Michigan Wolverines signing, and the prices on those seem to be at about $60 an item up there. Well, for the New England collectors, we've got the Dedham Card Show coming up on Monday. I think Monday is President's Day, so it makes sense for that. We don't see too many Monday shows, but we've got a three-day weekend. Might as well take advantage of it. Dedham, Massachusetts, Holiday Inn, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. They've got 85 tables set up there. Admission, $3. Kids under 12 get in free. They are going to have Sean Thornton signing autographs out there, former Bruins tough guy, a couple other teams as well, but mostly known with the Bees. $25 fee for his autograph. Cardboardpromotions.com has all the info on that show and all of their upcoming shows and signings. Well, it's time to move on to Collector's Corner here, where we're joined by Rob Parker. I talked to Rob a while ago. We've wondered why you get him on the show for a while. He was trying to get on when Jeff was still with us and... Unfortunately, I couldn't line the time up, but we finally got him on here this week. And so we talked to Rob about his collection, mostly a hockey and soccer guy, uh, collects with his son, Braden. And uh, they were actually in Lake Placid, New York, when they did this one. Braden was taking a luge camp up there. So kind of a cool thing to get to try that out. And it looked like he really liked it from the videos I saw on there. So hopefully you enjoy our interview here in Collector's Corner with Rob Parker. And now it's time for Collector's Corner. Let's hear from our collector this week. This segment is sponsored by Collects, the free app for scanning, pricing, tracking, and cataloging your cards. Get your first $5 on the app automatically by scanning a card, adding it to your collection, and listing it for sale today. All right, well, we're here in our Collector's Corner segment, and we finally got Rob Parker on the show. Rob, good to have you on board here. Thanks for having me, Drew. 
Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I know you were talking to a Jeff about trying to get on there and things never could quite line up and it never quite worked out. And so I want to make sure we got you on here pretty quick here once we got the show rebooted. So, yeah, just uh, good to have you on here. But just tell everyone a little bit about uh, what you collect and how and uh, just we'll start with that there. Sure, sure. Uh, mainly, I collect a lot with my son. We collect hockey. Uh, we have done some minor league baseball in the past, but um, we used to have uh, the Houston Astros affiliate in town and. You know, with with minor league baseball realignment and stuff, we lost our affiliation, and uh, so we have independent baseball, which is good, but um, definitely not as many guys that you know have cards or things like that to collect. Um, as far as how I got like my origin story, um, I started collecting when I was probably about eleven to twelve years old. Um, I'm from New York, so I collected a lot of um, New York Mets. That was my team. A uh, few Yankees, um, New York Giants. Uh, a lot of a lot of times it was guys that came to town um, to meet and stuff like that. Um, then I then I was really into soccer, and when I was about fourteen or fifteen, I had the opportunity to go to a summer camp down in Maryland, um, just outside of Baltimore, and uh, it was run by Keith Van Aaron, who was a former professional indoor soccer player, also played in the NASL, and um, the great thing about that was. I got to meet so many of these indoor soccer players from, from the Baltimore area. Um, you know, Mike Stankovic, uh, Drago, uh, Mike Reynolds, a lot of those guys. So um, while I was down there, definitely got autographs there, um, you know, and really became into the so- soccer. Um, met some of the women's national team players, so I would get them. And uh, But then, you know, college and life and stuff came and took a, a, a little bit of a break. Um, and uh, kind of did it here and there. But then when my son came along and he started wanting to, like, you know, go to sporting events, I said, hey, it might be a good experience for him to meet players. And then it's just taken off since then. Back to what you were saying there about uh, the independent baseball there. I was like, doing that a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, it's like you said, you don't get a whole lot of guys with cards there. When you do, it's always, like, somebody who was in, like, 2014 Bowman draft and never got above double A or something like that. But – Sometimes that can be good for, you know, helping people out on like sets or something like that a little bit once in a while. Absolutely. We had, uh, actually our manager for the last two years was Pete and Cavilia. Oh um, yeah. We just got him down here. He moved to, uh, Cleburne here. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. And, um, I, I actually, I never got him. Um, wow. it's because we didn't go to a, a lot of games, but also, um, there was moments if you, if you got to him, I've been told that, you know, he would, he would sign cards. No problem. But sometimes it was it was just tough because it was tough to ca- catch up with him. I spent a lot of time in the clubhouse and stuff. There is one funny story um, <laughs> I'll tell you guys about. Uh, we, we were getting the team set signed, and um, it was before one of the games, and Pete came out of the, the clubhouse, and I swear to God he was in his, like, boxers. And I'm like, I'm not going. I was with my kids. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to get his autograph. And he was getting an Uber takeout. Um, and that was my opportunity, I guess. I just never got to it. So <laughs> if he ever goes up there again, he's always been great about it. He did, uh, he's done some like Rangers alumni signings and stuff there. And actually Cleburne just had an event a couple, about a couple of weeks ago or so that a friend of mine went to, they had the world series trophy there and Inky was there. Inky was there right before the trophy. So everybody's just going right past him and going to see the trophy and everything. So a friend of mine goes up to him and has like 40 cards with him. And Inky's just so elated to see somebody actually wanting his autograph that, he sat there and signed all 40 of the cards for him. So I'm hoping I'll get him. I can get a couple up to you there. Then there's no problem if I do. So That'd be cool. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, indoor soccer stuff. Is actually, that's, I think, how we end up talking for the first time there. Because, uh, like you mentioned, everything there with the uh, Baltimore guys and all that. And I started around 2015 or so working on those indoor sets. And we ended up talking a lot about those things there for quite a while. Yes, we did. Um, you know, you've been ex- you were extremely instrumental in helping me get back on track with those. Um, I have a lot of those those cards from uh, was it Pacific? Uh, from yes, uh, yes, <laughs> they had like you know what five years of cards that were kind of were kind of like their area and uh, yeah though that's that list that you made uh, was very helpful and um, um, it was quite an adventure on some of them because you know you you get you get stuff back and they're like oh yeah they haven't been here for ten years but you know it says that they're there. Yep. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with the white pages. I know for a while they're like. My dad's address was listed as being in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and we had not lived there since 1985. So 
sometimes sometimes you win, sometimes you lose there when you go through like whitepages.com and stuff like that, which is what I typically used for trying to assemble all that. Absolutely. Well, it was very helpful. I appreciate it. Cool. It's good. Uh, what's what are, what's some of the main hockey stuff that you collect? I know uh, uh, Braden's a big uh, Cole Caulfield fan. What's uh, what's your uh, big one? What was your big one there before uh, when before you were in college? Who was your kind of your favorite player, your favorite uh, teams and all that? So it's kind of interesting. I wasn't a big hockey fan when I was younger. Um, it was mainly like, you know, the mainstream sports, like the baseball and stuff like that. Um, and then soccer kind of took me in a different tangent. But um, so I kind of got into hockey um, from Braden. We we ended up getting tickets from a friend to go to the Albany River or Albany Devils at the time. Uh, it was the affiliate for the New Jersey Devils. And um, we just decided to, after the game, he wanted, you know, he wanted to meet a couple players. So we went behind there and. I had no idea that you could actually just walk behind the stadium and get, get autographs. And so Braden got into it and that, you know, he wanted to start skating and stuff like that. And we had a lot of the guys around here who had families. And so next thing we know, we're going to all the games, we're meeting the players, the players are getting to know us um, conversations because hockey players by far have been just absolutely amazing. Um, to us, um, I could probably count on the hand, like one hand about the guys who've given us challenges over the years. Uh, but, um, so that, that's kind of been our, our thing. Um, and then, uh, Braden, um, got into specific teams. And so his, his first team was the, uh, Las Vegas Golden Knights, um, because of Mark Andre Fleury. He's a huge Mark Andre Fleury fan as well. Um. And uh, so we did, we did that. And then he's kind of morphed into Cole Caulfield. The, we mainly follow players, players that we've seen in college. Cause we also do a lot of college hockey too. Oh, yeah. We're very lucky for where we were located. Oh, yeah. um, you know, we, we've gone to UMass games. We met um, Kale McCarr there. We got to BC games uh, where we met Thatcher Demko, um, Trevor Zegris, um, he came to, he came to union college, which is right down the street from us. Um, and, uh, Spencer Knight with BC. Um, so we've, we've been lucky to meet a lot of these guys over the years and stuff. And as, as they've developed, we followed their careers and Cole, Cole's just another one of them. Um, and, and Bray has just, I think really fell for Cole because Cole has been extremely nice to him. And he's also, very similar to Bray, undersized player. Um, you know, he um, he plays his position. Um, Bray wears his number. <laughs> so, um, and we've had a couple experiences with Cole, and he's been by far and beyond, like, the nicest guy. Um, if anybody ever gets an opportunity to meet him, I would strongly encourage you to, to do it because – Unless security gets in the way, he will um, he will interact with you. It's always good. That really helps out when the guys are nice like that. And you just mentioned there before that hockey players just seem to be the best about that. I mean, I've done a lot of graphic of just about every sport there. And for me, a good day at a at a major league ballpark was about the same as a bad day graphing hockey for the number of stuff that guys would sign, for the number of guys who would sign, anything like that. So it was always really great to see some good interactions with those guys. Absolutely. And uh you know they're all they're all really good with the kids. A lot of them have kids. Um, you know, Mark Andre Fleury was awesome. We just happened to be walking by him going to a restaurant when we were in Buffalo to go see their game. Um, him and Ryan Reeves um, and uh, Mark spent like literally ten minutes talking to Braden. Signed his jersey, took a picture with him. Um, Ryan Reeves was acting as his security guard. It was great. Of course. <laughs> um, and then you know, like the, this past past October, I'll. I, I, I think the viewers would appreciate this story. Um, we went out to Buffalo because Braden had a hockey tournament and um, um, Cole was there and Bray had met Cole two years ago when he was in Laval because he was struggling um, after his initial breakout, you know, start with the Canadians. So um, we waited all afternoon. There, there's a, there were a lot of people, a lot of graphers that were chasing these guys around. And so Cole comes parks um, in front of the hotel in an Uber or whatever it gets out. And Bray's like, you know, Cole, can you sign my jersey? And Cole came right over to him. Bray broke down in tears. And Cole's like, oh, buddy, what's wrong? How is everything? And he gives him a big hug. And it's just like it, it just set the, it set the tone for the whole, the whole experience. And then what's even crazier is 
two months later, we went to another Canadians game because Bray had another tournament out there. And um, one of my friends, um, Josh Edwards, went to uh, went to Coley Saw. <laughs> they were just sitting there at Starbucks. And uh, Cole came with Nick Suzuki and a couple of the other guys. And um, Josh is like, hey, I got my friend, my friend's son, Braden, on the phone. Um, he, he met you at the hotel two months ago. Cole remembered him. Talked He's, to him on oh, the that's phone. Great. Um, and then um, after the game, gave Braden one of his – the stick that he used in the game. Oh, cool. And, yeah, it, it just, you know, I, I don't – I don't know anything that can match that. Just that experience. If for nothing else, that's an experience Braden will have for the rest of his life. And it's amazing. It's always great when those guys do that. I don't think these guys realize how much of an impact they could have on anyone's life. I th- Absolutely. I think sometimes they think of us um, that we're looking to sell stuff on eBay, and we're, mm-hmm. or you know we're trying to make money. And, and I'll, you know the vast majority of us are just true fans and collectors that just want that experience it's funny going back to what you mentioned there with reeves hanging out with flurry uh marty brodeur did the same thing he used to room with jim mckenzie on the road who was you know a tough guy for a good 10 years or so and you'd always see those two hanging out together so it's like if you saw mckenzie coming down you know brodeur wasn't too far behind him so yeah be have your stuff ready for both of them then <laughs> yeah they're they they're they're they were cool guys so yeah yeah Ah, I'm trying to think. Any any particular favorite pieces that uh, you guys have in your collection at all? That uh, other than you mentioned, of course, you know the game used stick there from a uh, Cole Caulfield and those kinds of things. Any other things that really stick out? That uh, any particular favorite items you've gotten over the years? Um. So Bray Bray's all about Cole Caulfield. So we just brought up that you know he got a warm up puck that game in October from Cole. Oh, that's right. Um, but um, I, I think those like little things like that we we get from players, and they don't even have to be like you know mm-hmm. top top name players. Um, over the years, we've gotten a couple you know jerseys from players or things like that. Um, I would say those are are like cherished items uh, for yes. us. Uh, so it's it's a lot of like game use type of things that that mean something. Maybe that were used in the game that we are at. Um, we, we collect a lot of pucks. Um, so I would say those are the big things. Uh, as far as for me, um, when I was like 15, 16 years old, I was, you know, huge into soccer. And so, and I mentioned earlier, you know, I met a lot of the U S women's national team players. Um, so I have some, some autograph stuff from Mia Hamm, uh, from, uh, uh, Karen Gabara and Michelle Eaker Stahl and, and those folks and that that stuff's um you know special to me just because those are those are even though they were female players they were the best in the world and um i i truly you know i so so those were special experiences um that that those those items have something to me plus the stuff that when i worked at summer camps um with um uh you know with Keith Van Aaron and stuff like that um, some of the, you know, the gear that I got from them and stuff has also been, uh, cool for me. It's just cause it has a, it has a meaning to me. Totally with you on the U uh, S women's national team stuff there. Cause you compare like the, the women's national team, the men's national team, the men, they're going to get into the top 16, maybe every, every four years during the world cup, the women are contending to win it all every single year. You give me the best women's players in the world or the 16th best men's players in the world. Yeah, I'm going to take the women's players every time. I think on that for uh, adding stuff to my collection for sure. Absolutely, and I um I don't know how they are now, but I will tell you that Mia and Michelle and actually Julie Foudy, um, all of them were excellent through TTM back then. Um, they they signed, they sent stuff back with their stuff. Like they really appreciated the fans. Um, I don't know if I could say that so much for the current players, um, but. I think it's also probably a little bit of a different time now. Yeah. I know Foudy and Akers are still good signers, at least. I know I've got, I think I've gotten both of them. And I think one of them was at the Soccer Hall of Fame induction. When I was out there when they did the, uh, they did an NASL 50th anniversary celebration a few years ago. And so they brought a bunch of old uh, NASL players there. And the entire uh, class was being inducted that year was there. So I think that might have been Foudy that year. I don't remember now if it was her or if it was Akers. I think it was one of the two, but they had them and, uh, was, uh, JP Della Camera was the big one that I was uh, 
excited to get a chance to talk to you. Legendary broadcaster, of course, in both the soccer. And I think he's done some hockey as well at some points, too, but definitely big in the soccer world. There. He was the voice of the MISL there for quite a while. Absolutely. And, you know, um, it's funny you bring that up, Drew, because there is one other experience I want to share. Um, and it's not TTM, but, um, you know, I coached college soccer for about 20 years. And I, so I would annually go to the um, National Soccer Coaches Convention. And so um, one year, um, Pele came. And oh, wow. yeah, and um, yeah, Pele came and they had um, uh, Sep. Uh, or um, Sepp Blatter. No, not Sepp Blatter. Um, I can't think of the guy's name. He was the goalie for the Cosmos forever. Um, oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about now. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, it's skip, skipping uh, my name. Or his uh, his name's just completely blanking for me. Gantenham uh, or something like that? Uh, was it him? It, it, um, he w- okay, so this is going to be a weird fact because I can... <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh at me, but um, he was in Playgirl. Because I joked to him about the comment. Um, oh my gosh, I can see him. I can see him too. Um, but he was so basically to go to the story. Um, I had a book of his, so I had him sign the book or whatever. And we were talking because everybody was going after Pele, and he goes to or and so we're, we're like we're joking about things and stuff like that and. And he's like, yeah, he goes, you wouldn't believe what we got away with back when I played for the for the Cosmos. And he was just telling me some of the stuff. I was like, wow. And uh, so as as we, I left that conversation, Paley was getting a leave. He had about six or seven bodyguards. And I'm like, well, I know I'm not getting an autograph. So what's the next best thing? Try to get a picture, right? So I he's coming by me and I go, Paley, would you mind taking a picture with me? And he's getting pushed by his security you know, the fans are following him. He grabs me on my arm. I'll never forget this. He grabs me on my arm. And as he's getting pulled back, he's like, son, go ahead, take a picture. And so I got a picture. Um, it's on my Facebook page of me and Pele. It's kind of like, you know, I, it's got part of my head in there. But um, that's a special moment because, I mean, I idolized him. I did book reports on him. You know, I think a lot of people during that time, you know, that's how they knew soccer was Pele. And, I mean, um, he, he was the big name for, you know, the better part of a couple decades there. Yes, yes. And for him just to take that moment, he could have just, like, you know, rushed past me. But for him to be willing to take that moment to grab me and keep me with him as we were mo- the crowd was moving to get that picture was just – it was special. That is awesome. Wow. I looked it up real quick on my phone here. Shep Messing, I think, is who we were looking for. Yes, yes, Shep Messing. Yep. <laughs> and the funny thing is my friend steve is going to be giving me so much crap for that too because you know he's another like all sorts of indoor soccer uh address info from me and everything and he was a he's a, a long island guy mm-hmm. so you know he knows all the cosmos guys and all the stuff from the uh all the who else new york arrows of course who were the big one in indoor during that era too and he's always mentioning those guys and yeah pretty completely just blank on shep messing's name like that oh, if, he, if he hears this i'm gonna get so much crap for it now yeah, yeah, he he was a really nice guy too. He was pretty, very cool. Yeah, oh, I'm trying to think. Have there been any that stick out as being kind of some tougher guys in uh, dealing with the uh, in uh, trying to meet them or get autographs, and that haven't been exactly uh, the best uh, for uh, best all these even bad. Sure. So, um, one of the, when I was a kid, one of the reasons why I kind of stopped, you know, getting autographs and collecting was because. Um, I went to this like, this event for um, uh, the, my local Boys and Girls Club, and George Foster was there. Oh, yeah. And um, I was really, you know, 86 Mets. I was really into it and stuff like that. I was my, you know, 12 years old. Um, and um, he wouldn't sign for me. I, all I wanted him to sign was a baseball, and he wouldn't sign it. Jeez. So that kind of, you know, turned me, you know, a little off a little on that. Um, and then um, – I've really only had one bad hockey experience. Um, and that was uh, Zach Bukali. Okay. Uh, I don't know what it was all about. Um, I don't know if he thought I was somebody else or something, but I had four cards and it was at an ECHL game. Now, ECHL is everybody signs. They're very, everybody's very cool. They're like happy you know who they are. Right. And, um, and some of those guys do move up. You know, um, and uh, so Zach was down. I don't remember with what team. Um, and um, 
it was after a game and he was coming off the, off the ice. And, um, I said, you know, I sound like Zach, would you mind signing? And he goes over and looks at me. And he's like, why do you have four cards? Me? I'm like, I just have four cards. I, if you don't want to sign them all, that's fine. He goes, I'll sign two. Which ones do you want? So I, he signed the two and I appreciate, I appreciate it. I said, thank you. Da, da, da. And then, um, after the game, I'm, I'm standing w- with the other people, um, that are getting autographs and, um, he comes over. He's like, I already signed for you. I'm not signing for you again. I'm like, Oh, I wasn't looking, you know, looking for your autograph or whatever. And then he proceeded to sign everything and every, everything and anything for the other guys. And I'm just like, I don't know what I did to him, but I'm like, yeah, <laughs> just bizarre. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was strange. Yeah. It's weird when, I mean, something like that happens. Cause it's like, yeah, you start wondering, okay, is it something I said? What, did I just catch you at a bad time before? Now you're just going to take it out of me forever? What happened here? And then you're kind of afraid to ask him again. It's just like, okay, how long is this guy's memory? You know, is he going to remember it, you know, a couple of years later? Or is he just, you know, going to be like, oh, yeah, sure, no problem. Knock out four for you all of a sudden. So. Right. I agree. I agree. And it was just, I yeah. think it was also like, wow, I just got, you know, I just got like, I mean, at least he signed something. But at an ECHL game, I was like, wow. <laughs> Jeez. And everybody's like looking at me like, what did you do to him? I'm like, right. I have no you had you had the audacity to ask him for four cards. I mean, what what the hell? Wow, that's and I mean, yeah, I've I've seen that out of NHL guys once in a while. Mm-hmm. And even that is kind of rare. But to see it out of an ECHL guy, it's just I mean, that's shocking is the only word for it. Where wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I, I get it. These guys are bugged all the time and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I get it, but it was just kind of a, a awkward, weird situation that, you know, you always feel kind of like, you know, I, I'm getting up there in age now too. So yeah. it's, it's like, you know, you're asking people that are, are much younger than you and, you know, like it kind of makes you like, wow, but yeah, I'm, I'm not looking forward to that. I'm going to spring training here in a couple of weeks and you're going to see these guys that, you know, were signed in the Dominican Republic at 16 and stuff. They're out there like 17 and 18. I'm like, I'm pushing 40 and I'm asking this guy for an autograph. Well, what the hell? If he wants to sign it, great, fine, sure, go ahead. But yeah, I, I, it does feel weird asking once you get above about in the 30s or so. It seems. Yeah. Feels different. Uh, moving on to like TTM stuff. About how many do you typically like send out in, let's say, the average month or average week or anything like that? How active are you uh, in the mailbox? So, um, I've I've been a lot more active in the past than I have been currently, um, and part of that is just because I've gotten a lot of the guys over the years. So I'm not really like into continuing to to pump and you know get more cards. Um, I do have friends that that want to try to get a card for every player, or like every card the player has had. So they'll they'll auto, you know they'll ask a couple times and stuff like that. But I've been trying to find like newer folks that I don't have or that I, I want to get some some for. Um, I would say probably five to ten a month. Um, is what I what I send out about. Yeah, you can only use so many Frank Tanana autographs before you're like, all right, why why do I need forty of this guy? Which I, that's the level I've hit with Sergey Gonchar at this point. I think I've got fifty different ones. And I'm like, why why do I still have unsigned ones? So right. <laughs> I definitely feel that. Yeah. 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 Any uh, any sets or anything like that that you're focusing on or anything like that or that you have focused on in the past? Sure. So um, I, I mainly collect um for the signed sets. I try to do the heroes and prospects. I think it's yes, 2011 yes. through 2015 or something like that, like 11, 12, 12, 13. Um, so I have, I have a, a good number of each of those. Um, but that's, that's the main, the main, you know, the main sets that I collect, but I do do a lot of nowadays because of the ECHL guys. A lot of those guys have CHL cards um, from upper deck. Or they have um, Canadian Juniors cards. That CHL set really seems to have kind of affected things. It seemed like 15 years ago, it seemed like everybody was doing those the Heroes and Prospects sets. And then after a while, it's kind of tapered off. Now you see a lot more that are doing those CHL sets, as you just mentioned. There. Even the AHL sets a little bit, too. Yes, yes. And it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite amusing because some of the guys on the team don't realize these guys have cards from other sets. So they'll walk by and they'll be like, what the heck are you signing? Wait. And they're like, oh, my God, come on over here. Look, look, guys, look, he's got peach fuzz on his head. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's there's some of that. And then, you know, you'll also get some of the old NHL players who are now coaches. Um, yes. 
like um, Pascal Rameau last year was with uh, Trey Revere Lions or Trois Revere Lions. And um, uh, I had a couple of cards of him. So he was signing him. And some of the players were like, oh my God, you actually did play. Because you know? <laughs> some of the guys are young. They would, he played before they were born. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, yeah. So they would, uh, they would, you know, the, a lot of the guys like to see the, their, their coaches with cards because it kind of makes them laugh about them. It's amazing that happens everywhere too. It's I mean in minor league hockey there, and I'm just thinking back a couple of years ago when we had the team in Grand Prairie here, the uh, Texas Air Hogs. They were partnered up with I think it was like the uh, Taiwanese national team or something like that, and brought all their players over to play for them. And one of the guys who was coaching there in Grand Prairie had actually played over in China before, and so he spoke at least a little bit of Chinese and everything. And uh, so a couple of players were coming over as he signed a couple of cards for me, and he was explaining to the players, "Oh yeah, hey, these are cards from back when I played." and one of the players looks at me and says something, and uh, it was Kevin Joseph was the guy that was the coach, and he says, oh, yeah, he wants to see the cards there. So I turned the card and opened it back up for him. I said, that was 20 years ago, and the player looks at him and goes, whoa. I was like, yeah, those, these guys are just so surprised to see all this stuff and seeing their coach 20 years before, and they're just, like, so shocked by it. And it was such a cool reaction because, it's like, you never think of collectibles outside of the United States really that much, at least U.S. and Canada, mm-hmm. but – starting to grow bigger over in Europe. Cards are finally starting to take off a bit there. You're starting to see them over in Asia now. And so these guys, you know, they maybe this may be some of their first times they've really experienced getting to see these cards and getting to see their coach, you know, 20 years ago along with it. Absolutely. Well, any other thoughts before we uh, let you go and uh, continue back with, you got uh, the luge camp that you got going on there with uh, Braden up there. there. Yeah. Bray's, um, Bray's participating in a, a USA luge slider camp up here in Lake Placid. We're literally, about 600 feet from um, the uh, 1980 rink right now at our hotel, um, and, which is pretty cool. We, we went over there yesterday. He got into the locker room there. And, um, you know, Lake Class is just a, a really cool place. Um, I would definitely say for those of you who do have kids that are, like, younger, um, TTM, autographing, but TTM in particular is can be very useful. Help them with their writing skills so much today um kids kids can't write you know either cursive or just write in general and you can use a lot of the skills with ttm um for their for their growth and the same thing with meeting players um uh have let your let your child go up and get their own autographs um and the reason why i say that is because it helps them grow being able to talk to people um, I get so many compliments from Bray about Braden about how he speaks to people and just, you know um, how he communicates with adults. And I really think a lot of that has to do not with me or my wife, but with his interactions with some of these players because he he feels comfortable talking to talking to them. And I think nowadays kids maybe don't have all those communication skills that will really help them later in life. So uh, there's just. I guess what I'm saying is there's a lot of useful um, tools that can come from autographing other than just the autographs. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know if they still teach letter writing in school or anything like that, but I remember back when I was in school, we had to learn it a little bit. We did a little bit with it, but it's kind of a dying art form. And now you see, you know, it's all about how many characters can you fit into a single tweet there to get your point across still limiting it to 140 or whatever it is. It's like, you got to sometimes flesh that out a bit. And yeah, writing a letter like that, I think can really help kids out a lot for sure. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, that's Rob Parker. Thanks for joining us here. Good to have you on the show. And uh, I'm sure we'll be uh, talking more and hopefully we'll see you around at another show again. We got to see you at the uh, 2022 national and hopefully we'll get to see it another one out there at some point here soon too. Sounds like a great plan. Big thanks once again to Rob for joining us here in the collector's corner segment right now. Let's move on to making the grade. Making the Grade is sponsored by CGC Cards. All card grading, all in one place. Certified guarantee company, CGC. Devoted to the expert grading of collectible cards. Visit cgccards.com today. Making the Grade is a summary of all things from the grading portion of our hobby. Keep me up to date on what the trends are in that area. Troy, we've got some numbers here from this past week, courtesy of gemrate.com. What do you got for us from the Big Four? Yeah, so the numbers have come in from January 29th to February 4th for the four major graders here. So first of all, PSA uh, graded 285.5 thousand uh, cards with a percentage change of about down 4%, but uh, CGC kind of made up for that down 
uh, grading 63.7K, and they were up 61% that past week. So that's pretty pretty remarkable. I think uh, there are a few attributing to that. And SGC was up 2% to 37.4K, and Beckett was down 28% to 10.3K. So just about under 400,000 total uh, cards graded in that past week. Been interesting. It's been kind of an up and down couple of weeks here for Beckett, where it's like, you know, they'll be up 25%, then down 30, then suddenly up 45%, down 10%. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of weird that it's just uh, kind of such a seesaw thing going on there with them. I don't know if we're going to be seeing, you know, with all these, uh, all these cards coming out on February 14th, if we're going to be seeing a big spike in that coming up, you know, as soon as they get past their window of grading, maybe the, all those will jump up pretty significantly, but that'll be a, a fun thing to see here in a little bit. It'll be interesting for sure. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got for this week's Big Three. This week's Big Three is brought to you by Gemrate.com. Whose cards are hot and whose cards are cold this week? Let's find out from our friends at Gemrate.com. Big Three is exclusive to TTM Cast, courtesy of Gemrate.com. Ryan lets us know who's trending up individually among players in the grading world. And we've got a well, three big ones here this week. Leading off the list, he's on the top three, for the, the big three for the second week in a row, Puka Nakua. He was up around 40-some percent last week, came at number three on the list. This week he's up 79%, so everybody jumping on the Puka bandwagon, it looks like, right now. So uh, getting on that while he's hot. CJ Stroud coming in number two. He just missed the big three last week. This week he pulls into the number two spot. He's up 44%, and... A major surprise in the number three spot, kind of out of nowhere, Mike Schmidt is up 41%. My only guess is, you know, maybe with Adrian Beltre getting to the Hall of Fame this week, maybe collectors looking and saying, hey, there's another Hall of Fame third baseman. Maybe I should get some of his stuff graded, and maybe that's kind of boosts him up. I don't know really if that's uh, if that's a possibility or not. Yeah, that is that is very strange. You know, you can't go on YouTube right now but without seeing people trying to, to hunt for the C.J. Stroud, so... Yeah, I know where that one's coming from. Well, now for the second week in a row, C.J. Stroud's activity has uh, been up. And, you know, we mentioned 30-some percent last week, up 44% this week. And this time, for the second week in a row, one of his cards is the big individual winner. It's his uh, Panini Prism rookie card is the big card for this week, tripling in the number graded between last week and this week. So, you know, we mentioned before, Stroud having a great year there with Houston and might be turning things around there. And so that's reflected in the card world. So those are this week's big three risers. Troy, who are this week's big three that have been falling? Well, uh, leading leading off our list is Erling Holland, who is down 20%, and Kevin Durant, who is also down a little over 31%, and Kenny Pickett, who is down 38%. Yeah, Pickett's not too big of a surprise there to me. I mean, maybe a little bit of quarterback and controversy there in Pittsburgh. He kind of fell off late in the season, and... Don't really know what his future is going to be there uh, with the Steelers. Hmm. So a big thanks once again to GemRate.com for providing us all of that grading info, especially the Big Three. TTM Cast is the only place that you can find the Big Three from GemRate.com. Right now, let's go ahead and move on to the TTM Cast stamp of approval. I bet you're wondering who earned this week's TTM Cast stamp of approval. Well, TTM Cast stamp of approval just kind of gives us a chance to give our thumbs up to anything from the previous week. You never know what it's going to be. Typically try to, you know, show the words of things other than sports and sports collectibles, though a lot of the times it still ends up falling back into that. I know with mine it's going to, and Troy, it looks like with yours it is as well, so we'll let you go ahead and uh, lead off with this one. Well, I just wanted to give a big shout out for my stamp of approval to show. I think he's been on here once or twice. That is Scott from Reindeer Studios, and he actually uh, announced that he is uh, quitting his day job to concentrate on his sports uh, caricatures and consignments. So definitely wish him well. I I know he is a big member of the card community, and he hasn't. You know, we've been threatening to take away his TTM card a little bit because he hasn't done his very much TTMing. But <laughs> uh, he always uh, he's always a great member of the community, and we definitely want to wish him well in his new venture. Yeah, and if there's any listeners out there that haven't checked out his stuff, definitely go and do so. I mean, the guy absolutely comes up with some incredible, incredible artwork on there. He's my fellow Corey Snyder fan, too, so always a big fan of his things there. But, yeah, I mean, he's just an incredible artist. It's really cool to hear that uh, he's taking that full time now. 
I was going to say, and his Christmas cards are always highly anticipated. All right. My stamp approval for the week is the Panther City Lacrosse Club. Um, my wife and I have really gotten into watching the NLL. It's indoor lacrosse, box lacrosse, they call it in Canada. It's played on a hockey arena covered in turf. So it's uh, they play five on five plus a goalie. And, yeah, it's just super exciting to watch. I mean, it's just, I mean, very physical. Have the occasional fights in there, some big hits and all that. But a lot of high scoring as well. And so last night, we're, we're season ticket holders for the team. We went to the uh, Panther City Lacrosse Club versus Colorado Mammoth game. And it was one of the best games that I've watched, i got to say, especially the fourth quarter of it. Uh, Panther City was up 8-6 to six at halftime. Uh, they gave up two in the third. They're tied at eight going into the fourth. Colorado takes an early lead. And then from there, it was literally the most back-and-forth game ever, just literally if I run down the box score of this thing. So Colorado, a minute into the to the uh, fourth quarter, takes a 9-8 lead. Then suddenly Panther City scores two goals in the span of a little over uh, a little under two minutes to take a 10-9 lead. Colorado then scores two goals within about a minute and a half of each other, taking an 11-10 lead. Panther City regains the lead 12-11 to with two goals in the span of Almost exactly a minute. It was 5.54 left and 4.55 left, so they're up 12.11. Colorado ties it up about a minute later, then takes the lead a minute and a half later. 2.15 left, they're up 13-12. to 12. So Panther City pulls the goalie late, and uh, they charge down. 34 seconds left, they tie it up. Next faceoff, Colorado controls the faceoff. No shot clock, so they pull their goalie as well, try to get a 6-on-5 in the final 30 seconds. Shot gets shut down by the uh, Panther City goalie. It's a 13-13 game going into overtime, and Colorado controlled the faceoff dot in this game. They won 22 out of 30 faceoffs across the thing, but Panther City came up when it counted, won the faceoff to start the overtime, walked down, and 30 seconds in, they scored the game winner. The place just erupted, and best of all, this game was on uh, ESPNU and TSN, so it was aired all across the U.S. and Canada, so... They got to see, you know, a really great Panther City team and a small crowd on hand, but they got noisy when that uh, game winner was scored, just totally erupted on that. So great game to watch. And so my stamp approval for the week, the Panther City Lacrosse Club. All right, let's go ahead and keep this thing going. We'll get on into the Vern Rap Minute. Vern Rapp Minute is dedicated to the memory of Mr. Vern Rapp, former Major League ball player, manager, and uh, the show's founder, Jeff Baker, tried to mail an autograph request out to him, not knowing that he, unfortunately, had already passed away. And so, in tribute to Vern Rapp, we have the Vern Rapp Minute, where we remind collectors and uh, let everybody know of who has passed away in the last week in the world of sports, celebrity, music, movies, politics, anything like that. So, uh, that way you don't uh, make the same mistakes that we have made in the past. Uh, first up, we have Brant Allier. Brant was an outfielder. From 1965 to 73 for several teams, including the second version of the Washington Senators, also the Minnesota Twins, the Oakland A's, and the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, Allier hit 291 in the 1970 season for the Twins, hit 16 homers that year as well. That was his best season of his career. Twins went to the playoffs that year as well. Brandt was an excellent TTMer through 2022. He was 83 years old. Also this week, we have John Pregenzer. He was a pitcher from 1963 to 1964 for the San Francisco Giants, and he only played for 27 innings with a 2-0 record with one save. And he was also an excellent TTMer. I don't think I ever got him, but I remember seeing his name cross across many lists over the years. And John Pregenzer was 91 years old. We also lost Bill Latchman this week. That's a Last name you might recognize there, he was a longtime coach and manager in both the Giants and Angels systems, but he's the older brother of Marcel and Rene Latchman, who, of course, were longtime coaches and managers at the major league level. Bill uh, coached up with the Angels as their bullpen coach for a little while in the 90s as well. Uh, while he was managing the Fresno Giants in 1982, A-ball level there, 
at the age of 48, he had to come in as a catcher in one of their games. Not sure what the reasoning was behind. I don't know if there were some injuries or uh, mishandling of pinch hitters or maybe a super long extra inning game or something like that. But he came in and caught an inning for them as a player. Just had to put himself in there. Uh, Bill was an excellent TTMer. He was 89 years old. And one of the biggest names this past week was country singer Toby Keith, who was, you know, top in the charge <laughs> pretty much since 1993. He had 20 songs and 10 albums at number one on the Billboard's country charts. And, you know, he had a looking at the Twitter feed for Toby Keith, you either liked him or hated him. I know he had a long time feud with the Dixie Chicks over the years as well. He was an occasional TTMer. I think some of my my friends like Zane Savage and Stacey Schaefer also uh, had gotten him over the years, but I unfortunately never had. But Toby Keith was 62 years old. And lastly, another one from the music world and a little bit in the acting world as well. Although one of his quotes on acting, he said that I'm not an actor. I'm a drunk musician playing a drunk musician. And that is Mojo Nixon. Mojo was a uh, big name in the world of punk rock, cowpunk, psychobilly, and even a little bit into country music there a bit as well. But he played Toad in 1993's Super Mario Brothers movie. If you're one of the seven people that actually saw the movie, I, I did. It was it was strange, but... Yeah, Mojo Nixon was in that. He's uh, more famous for his music career, though. He did the songs Elvis is Everywhere, Debbie Gibson is Pregnant with My Two-Headed Love Child, and a lot of others that are not uh, suitable for broadcast. But, uh, I mean, irreverent is a good way to describe Mojo Nixon. He uh, was an occasional TTMer. Mojo Nixon was 66 years old. I was a big... I love that song, the Elvis is Everywhere. That was, that was a fun song on Dr. Demento whenever it would come up. So. Yeah, he had so much fun and crazy stuff like that. It's, he was a guy that never really got into much until kind of more recently and everything, and it was mostly because of the Dead Milkman and their song. They said, uh, if you don't have Mojo Nixon, then your store could use some fixing. And I'm like, all right, let's check this out there. And wow, it's uh, some entertaining stuff there and always uh, always fun to throw some of that into some punk rock mixes. So once again, uh, that's the Vern Rap Minute for the week. Our condolences are with anybody who lost anyone this week. And now let's move on to our TTM Returns. Was our mailbox full this week? Let's take a look at this week's TTM Returns. Well, my mailbox has slowed down a little bit this week. I know, uh, Troy, the weeks you were out there, we had my friend Lee on, and he's like, oh, yeah, I got this one in this week. I got this one in this week. And I'm like, well, I got these 10 in this week, and you know, rattling all those off there for a bit. But, yeah, a little slower this week, but still got some uh, some good stuff that came in there. Back on Saturday, it was uh, Steve Woodard that uh, came into my mailbox there, former Brewers and Indians pitcher. Almost said Bruins there. I'm crossing my sports there. But yeah, he uh, came back about, I think, two, three weeks or so is what it took there to uh, get him back. Also got uh, Kelly Gruber, former Blue Jays third baseman. Took about three weeks on him. Gruber does, uh, he was a longtime great TTMer throughout the uh, early 2000s or so, and then uh, kind of stopped for a bit in the 2010s, but seems to have picked it up again. Uh, just an FYI for anyone out there that's going to send to him. He does request a donation toward uh, a charity. I'm not sure exactly which uh, what he gives to there, but does request a donation, but um, he doesn't really have a specified one. So, you know, whatever it's worth to you, send that along with it. And he'll even, I mean, he wrote a short note back to me and even signed the back of the index card it was on, so I can, you know, print a custom onto that if I want to. So great stuff there from uh, one of my favorite players of the 90s. And Mario Gosselin is the third one I got back. He's up in Canada right now. I think he's with a school in Canada, but he's a former goalie for the Nordiques and the Kings. And... Uh, yeah, I think it took, uh, this is a long one, this one I think I sent out in like May of last year, so we're talking like, you know, six, eight months, something like that that took to get back to me, but it's here, it's one for my 89.90 or 88.89 uh, top set, so always good to get a set hit like that no matter how long it takes, and sent out 22 more earlier this week, so my pace of 10 a week is holding steady right now, um, I kind of have to write 10 more today, which I don't know if I'm going to do that to be able to keep that up, but we'll see, I got some time tonight, I got some time tomorrow, we have it out by Monday, I probably will end up doing that, so. There we go. Troy, what have you gotten here over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, so I think I mentioned this before that in 2023, I think I sent out, uh, well, I'm not going to say exactly, but it was pretty abysmal what I sent out. And so I wanted to start the new year off with a bang. So I sent out 100 <laughs> on January 2nd or 3rd while I was on vacation. And uh, a lot of those were some 92, 93 Fleer Ultra Basketball and 1990, 91 Hoops. 
Uh, those seem to be pretty popular going through when I've been looking to see who sent those out. So a lot of people kind of doing those sets and they're kind of fun. So uh, first I had Anthony Cook, uh, basketball return. That was about 22 days. John Crotty, again, basketball for 15 days. Uh, pretty much a TTM legend with one of my favorite signatures, Jim Acker. Uh, always like getting him back. It's kind of a, it's hard to explain his signature, but it, it's definitely uh, unique. And he took about 17 days this time. Uh, Dana Allison, 15 days. Bill Allman, uh, let's see, what was his? About 15 days. Ruben Amaro Jr., about 25 days. So you can see all of these were were ones that I had sent <laughs> uh, that first week of January, pretty much. Uh, another TTM legend, Brad Arnsberg. He is a great signer. Um, and he, I got a little extra 91 Don Russ just in case something should happen to my other one. So very happy to get that back from Jack Armstrong and uh, Brad Arnsberg. I also got one of those. Uh, Don August was about 15. He was also a pretty good TTMer. And then uh, the basketball version of Tony Bennett. He signed two of two in 13 days. So, and he has kind of an interesting, it almost looks like, uh, I don't know, it, it's almost looks like Val Kilmer almost uh, on his uh, on his card. But Tony Bennett, again, 13 days. So happy to see those coming in. My informed delivery has been full of surprises this past uh, couple weeks. Very happy. You mentioned Don August there, and it's kind of funny. The It seemed like those late 80s, early 90s Brewers pitching staff just has so many great TTM signers on it. I mean, you just got August back. There's Dan Plesak, and it was a great signer for quite a while. Uh, I think Bill Kruger's another one. There's a whole bunch of those guys. It's kind of like the uh, late 50s to early 60s Pirates. It seems like everybody on those teams just about signs, and now you've got kind of the same deal going on with those 80s and 90s Brewers pitchers too. Mm, yeah, definitely. And Don August is a – I don't know if I said that. He's also a great – TTM are pretty much a, a guaranteed there. It's a former Team USA guy, too, in the 84 Olympics. Oh, okay. Yeah, 85 tops. He's on one of those uh, Team USA ones. So any Team USA collectors out there, make sure you send to Don August there if you haven't already done so. Well, I think that just about wraps it up here this week. And go ahead and put a bow on this one and call it a day. Troy, any other thoughts to add before we go? No, thanks for uh, listening, everybody, and glad I'm I'm back here for a couple weeks. I, I might have a couple, two or three Saturdays that I'm not able to be here, and so I've been listening to some of the shows that uh, over the past couple weeks, and uh, everybody's, you know, doing great. It's always fun to hear, you know, the Hall of Fame discussion a couple weeks ago was, was really fun, <laughs> and just glad to be here, and Hopefully we can keep these returns going for both of us and your your 10 a week will start coming back as soon as you know it. So. Exactly. Well, hey, speaking of that Hall of Fame discussion, we will have Les Wolf rejoining us next weekend on our show. So we'll be talking to him probably about some spring training graphing and uh, just the start of spring training and all that. He's always got some uh, good baseball insights there. And so, yeah, we'll hear from uh, Les Wolf next week. We'll have no show the week after that on the 24th, but we will be back for the 17th at the very least, and I think that about does it. Once again, a big thanks again to Rob Parker joining us in the Collector's Corner segment, and I think that about covers it. We'll see you next week. Wishing you many happy returns. Hey everyone, be good. Be good.